Hello and welcome to Hoffmann Photography. My name is Rainer, I'm a photographer and photo instructor. Today's topic are the colors in our digital images. And to really make those colors stand out, I'm wearing a gray shirt today. Your arts teacher back in high school probably told you that the three primary colors, those colors that cannot be mixed from other colors, are red, blue and yellow. She didn't tell you the truth. Well, she didn't lie to you, she just didn't know better. And what's more, she talked about painting, not about photography. In photography, however, we have to deal with light, not with paint. And the three primary colors of light are red, green and blue, or RGB for short. Unfortunately, most people are not familiar with the RGB color system. So let's do a little thought experiment. Actually, you could do this experiment at home if you had three slide projectors and a red, a green and a blue filter respectively in front of the lenses. I don't have slide projectors anymore, so it has to be a thought experiment. For our little thought experiment, we need complete darkness. So let's switch off the light. Now we switch on the slide projector with a red filter in front of its lens and we get this red spot. Now let's assume this is maximum brightness. If we now add the light from the slide projector with a green filter in front of its lens, then we add light, we add green light to the red light, and in this overlapping area, the resulting light is yellow. Now, if we switch on the third slide projector, the one with the blue filter, then the areas where blue light is added to the red light results in this color. And you might be tempted to call this pink, but the technical term for this color is magenta. And when we add blue light and red light, then the resulting color is this one. It's called cyan. The area where the light from all three slide projectors is added together results in white light. And what's happening here is we are adding light. We started with red light and we added green light and then we added blue light. And therefore the mixing colors or the mixed colors, like in this case magenta, is brighter than blue and it's brighter than red because we have added two light sources in this area. Same is true for yellow. Yellow is brighter than red and it's brighter than green. And you guess it, it's true also for cyan. Cyan is brighter than blue and it's brighter than green. And in the center, where we add all three light sources, the result is white. Again, white is brighter than all three base colors and it's brighter than the mixed colors. That's the reason why this color system is called additive. At the moment we have all three slide projectors at maximum brightness. But let's assume that we can dim the slide projectors. And if we dim the green one to about 50% of its maximum brightness, like so, then the resulting mixed color is no longer yellow, but it's orange, because in this case, the red light is still at its maximum, but we have less green light. So it's no longer yellow, but orange. And in the center, we don't have white anymore, but well, let's call this pink. Now we can do just the opposite and have green at its maximum brightness and we dim the red one to 50% of its maximum brightness 
and then the resulting mixed color is a yellowish green. If we dim all three slide projectors to, let's say, about 50% of their maximum brightness, then of course all the primary colors and the mixed colors get darker and our central area here is no longer white, but it's gray. Now, here's a little trick question for you. How do we get black in this color system? Well, of course, just by switching all three slide projectors off. Here we have again our three primary colors. On the left side, black, no light at all. And on the right side, maximum brightness for each of the three colors. Now, in the digital world, we don't have smooth gradients like in this illustration. We can only increase the brightness in increments shown here. But the same principle is true. On the left side, black, no light at all. On the right side, maximum brightness. All these brightness values, these discrete brightness values, have a number assigned. Black usually has assigned the number zero. And the maximum brightness value is 255. Of course, the value in the middle is then 128. Now the color of each pixel in an image can be, can be defined by the three color values. And here are a few examples. Pure red has the values 255 for red. There's no green light and no blue light. So the values for green and blue are zero. Pure green, of course, there is no red light, no blue light. There's just green light, so green has a value 255. And then, of course, blue, the same principle applies. Blue light at its maximum brightness, the value is 255. No green light, no red light, so zero in both cases. If we mix red and blue, sorry, if we mix red and green light, both at maximum brightness level, then the value for red is 255 and the value for green is 255, but there's no blue light. Magenta is a mixture of red and blue light, so no green light. Green has a value zero, switched off red and blue at their maximum brightness 255 and so on. Cyan is the mixture of green and blue at maximum values, no red light involved. In the third column we have just some random colors I picked in Photoshop and we'll start with this orange color and orange is a mixture of red and green mostly but you can see here red dominates it's not at its maximum brightness but it's quite bright with a value of 220 and there's quite a bit of green light involved but there's also a little bit of blue light and this green color of course green has the largest value of all three but there's still quite a bit of red light involved and even a bit of blue light. And in this color, which is mostly blue, the blue value is the largest of the three, but there's also a considerable amount of green and red light involved. In the right column, we have white, gray and black. And White means all three slide projectors are at maximum brightness. So all values are 255. And black means there's no light at all. So the RGB values are all zero. 
And this here in the middle is medium gray. So all three values are at 128. Neutral grays always have the same value for red, green, and blue. Now, if this would be a very dark gray, then maybe the values would be 60, 60, 60. If it would be a very light gray, closer to white than to black, then maybe the values would be 220, 220, 220. But for neutral grays, all three values are always the same. So, color and brightness, or the tonal value, of every pixel in our images is defined by three numbers. One each for the amount of red, green and blue light. Let's have a look at a real-world example. I have opened the info palette, this one, and when I put the mouse pointer on a pixel, the RGB values for that pixel are displayed in the info palette. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see the RGB values a bit better. And when I put the mouse pointer in the red car, you can clearly see that the red value is the largest value. But there's also a significant amount of green and blue. The values change as I move the mouse pointer, but as long as the mouse pointer remains in the red car, the red value always dominates. If, on the other hand, I place the mouse pointer on the driveway, all three values are very similar. And this is characteristic of neutral gray. If I place the mouse pointer on the chrome parts that reflect the sky, then the blue value dominates. But since the blue is not particularly intense, the red and green values are quite substantial. The sun reflection on the paint and in the chrome parts is of course overexposed and thus completely white. Accordingly, all three RGB values are 255. When the mouse cursor is in the dark shadow areas under the car, the RGB values are very small. And this means that these areas are very dark and almost black. Not quite black. True black would be 0, 0, 0. But values of around 20, as in this case, mean it's very, very dark gray. I'll move the info palette out of the way and we'll have a look at the channels palette. Let me zoom in a bit. Here we see the red, green and blue channels. Red, green, blue. That contain the brightness information for the three primary colors. The red channel, of course, shows the brightness of the red component of each pixel the green channel, the brightness of the green pixels, and the blue channel, the brightness of the blue pixels. I'll zoom out and activate the channels individually. This is the red channel. The principle is simple. In bright areas, like the car, there's a lot of red. In dark areas, like here or here in the trees, there is not much red. The green channel looks like this. There is not much green in the red car and therefore the car looks quite dark in the green channel. But the trees in the background are mostly green, so the green channel is bright in these areas. And this is a blue channel. Again, little blue in the car, some blue in the trees, and so on. Now, let's have a look at the driveway, uh, how that looks in the individual channels. And you'll see there is not much difference in the three channels. Again, that 
indicates that, the, that these areas are neutral gray and contain the same amount of red, green and blue light. And back to our color image. That's it for today. Oh, by the way, red, blue and yellow aren't even primary colors when you are painting. But that's a topic for another video. I hope this helped and thanks for watching.